Hi all, uh, today uh, we will be discussing about power transmission devices. So in various industries and workshops, the power record for driving various machines are supplied by prime movers. So prime mover is, where, uh, is a device which produces uh, this power. The prime mover releases power in the form of rotational energy of shaft which are transmitted to the machines through elements known as power transmission elements. So basically the power will be produced by prime movers which is actually the rotational energy of a shaft and it needs to be transmitted to the machine. So for transmission of power we use power transmission elements. So this is the basic classification of power transmission elements. Power transmission is classified into flexible elements and non-flexible elements. Flexible elements include belt, chain and rope. Belt is classified into flat belt and V belt and rope is classified into fiber and steel depending on the material that is used it is fiber and steel. Next is non-flexible. Non-flexible uh, power transmission elements include gear, clutch, coupling and power screw. Gear is again classified into spur gear, helical gear, bevel gear and worm w o r m worm gear. Okay. First one is belt drive. Belt is a continuous flexible material wrapped tightly over the pulley attached to two shaft to transmit power between them. So here in this figure you can see this is a shaft and this is another shaft and a pulley is attached. This circle is actually a pulley that is attached to this shaft and here you can see another pulley, circle pulley that is attached to this shaft and a belt is actually uh, uh, held between these two pulleys. The shaft from which power is transmitted or getting transmitted is known as driving shaft and the shaft to which power is transmitted is known as driven shaft. The pulley attached to the two shafts are known as driver pulley and driven pulley. So in this case here this is the driver. So the driver shaft has power and that power is to be transmitted to this driven shaft. So you have a pulley uh, on the driver shaft which is known as driver pulley and a pulley on the driven shaft which is known as driven pulley. And the belt is held between the driver and driven pulley to transmit power. The motion uh, is transmitted due to frictional resistance between the belt and pulley surface. So here since this driver has power the driver pulley will be rotating. Since friction is existing between the inner surface of the belt and outer surface of the pulley along uh, this point of contact. So due to the friction the power will be transmitted from the pulley to the belt and the belt will transmit the power here to the driven pulley and then to the shaft. Okay. There are actually two important types of belt drive. One is open belt drive and another one is crossed belt drive. So this is actually the figure of open belt drive. So here this is the shaft here, you can see the shaft here also. This is the plan that is you look from the top side, this is the plan here to the shaft, the pulley and the belt. This is open belt drive and this one is crossed belt drive where the belt is actually in crossed position. Okay, belt is in crossed position and now here the two pulleys are rotating in the same direction whereas here the two pulleys are rotating in opposite direction. So uh, uh, in belt drive, okay. So in belt drive, one problem of belt drive is that if suppose the friction is not sufficient, then uh, a phenomenon known as slip occurs. Slip means the pulley will be rotating, but the uh, belt will not move due to the uh, less friction existing between the uh, surfaces. Okay, so friction is a very important. Frictional resistance between the belt and pulley helps in transmission of power. Next is chain drive. A chain drive is a mechanically operated system used for transmitting power. Generally, chain drive is used when distance uh, to uh, for power transmission is less. Chain is made by a number of links which are connected with the help of pin. Chains are run over a wheel named sprocket which have several amount of teeth on it, its circumference to grip the chain. So this wheel is actually known as sprocket. Okay? We have a driver and a driven wheel and they are on sprocket. They have tooth on the surface. Uh, for um, tooth on surface on which the chain is mounted. So since the chain are mounted on the teeth, uh, it has a grip on the surface and hence the slip here will be zero. The major advantage of chain drive is that the speed ratio remains constant and there is no slippage. There is no slippage because the chain is mounted on the teeth. So these wheels are known as sprocket. The chains are actually made up of number of links which are connected. Here you can see a different number of links which are connected by using pins. Okay. Here also we have a, a driven and a driver uh, pulley, driver uh, sprocket on which chain is mounted. And next is uh, clutch. So this is a figure of a single plate clutch. A single plate clutch consists of a clutch plate 
whose both sides are coated with friction material. It is attached to an internally splined hub. The clutch plate along with the spline hub can move axially. A flywheel attached to the driving shaft and the spring located pressure plate are located on two sides of the clutch plate. So here in this figure uh, we can see the clutch plate here. This is the clutch plate. On both sides of the clutch plate a friction lining is provided. Here, here and here friction lining is provided. Okay. This is the pressure plate over here and this is the splined shaft. So this entire unit can actually move axially in this spline. So once you press, uh, press the clutch pedal, uh, here this uh, pressure plate along with the uh, clutch plate moves axially towards right. That is splined in the shaft so it moves towards the right. Thus the contact with the flywheel, this is the flywheel the contact with the flywheel that is at this, this point is the point of contact here and here this contact will be lost so there will be no power transmission once you release the uh, clutch pedal due to the spring force here the uh, clutch plate along with the pressure plate will move to the left direction in the shaft axially because it is spline and then again the contact comes and the power will be transmitted from flywheel to the uh, clutch plate and then to the pressure plate and then to the shaft Okay, so this is the working of single plate clutch. Next is gear drive. Now gear is a toothed wheel which meshes with another toothed wheel to give positive transmission of motion between shafts. Power transmission, uh, for power transmission one gear wheel is mounted on the driving shaft and another to the driven shaft with their teeth meshing. So here you can see two shaft, one is uh, driving shaft, this one. This one is the driven shaft and they have tooth on the circumference which will mesh with each other giving a positive drive. Since power transmission is by meshing there is no slippage and hence constant velocity ratio can be obtained. Gears are used to transmit moderate to large power over short distance without slippage. They are also used to transmit power when change in speed or direction is required between the driving and driven shaft. Applications in, are in late machine, drilling machine, then transmission gearbox, differential etc. So this is actually the figure of a transmission gearbox. Here uh, we have you can see a different number of gears as shaft is here and gears are mounted on the shaft. These two gears are in uh, contact uh, by the in the teeth and power is transmitted. Now different types of gears, we have different types of gears. One is spur gear, spur gear where the gear tooth is cut axial that is parallel to the axis of the shaft. Then internal gear where the gear tooth is cut inside the gear. Then rack and pinion uh, where uh, the axis of uh, one gear, uh, axis of both the gears are uh, normal that is they do not intersect. Both the axis of both the gears do not intersect that is rack and pinion gear. Then bevel gear where uh, the axis of the both the gears are uh, perpendicular to each other, axis meet perpendicularly. Then helical gear, helical gear uh, here the gear tooth is cut at an angle to the axis of the gear. Then herringe bone gear, herringe bone is a double helical gear, double helical gear is known as herringe bone gear. These are the different types of gears. Now gear terminology, basic terminology used in gears are, first one is pitch circle, pitch circle is an imaginary circle which by pure rolling action would give same motion as actual gear. Then pitch circle diameter, it is the diameter of the pitch circle. Pitch point, it is a common point of contact between two pitch circles. Then addendum, addendum is the radial distance between pitch circle and top of the teeth. Dedendum is the radial distance between pitch circle and bottom of the teeth. Then circular pitch, it is the distance measured along the circumference of a pitch circle from one point on one teeth to the corresponding point on the next teeth. Then module, it is the ratio of pitch circle diameter to number of teeth. Now all these terms have been represented in these figures. Okay. So here uh, see uh, first is pitch circle, pitch circle is actually an imaginary circle then uh, which by pure rolling action would give the same motion as that of the actual gear here uh, you can see pitch circle pitch circle is uh, this blue circle is known as pitch circle then pitch circle diameter is the diameter of the pitch circle then pitch point that is a po point a common point of contact between two gears then is addendum addendum is shown here addendum addendum is the radial distance from the pitch circle to top of the teeth that is addendum and the circle that is passing through the addendum is known as addendum circle. Then didendum is the radial distance between the pitch circle and the bottom of the uh, gear and this uh, uh, circle is known as didendum circle. Then circular pitch, pitch is actually shown here. It is the uh, radial distance along the pitch circle from one point on one teeth to the corresponding point on the another teeth. So, 
from this point to this point. This radial distance is known as circular pitch. Uh, then you can see the top land over here. This is the top portion is top land. This is the face, and this bottom portion is known as flank. Okay. So the, these are the basic gear terminologies. Next is gear trains. So two or more gear wheels meshing together to form uh, for power transmission from one shaft to another shaft is known as gear trains. So gear trains are actually combination of uh, gears. We have different types of gear trains. One is simple gear train, then compound gear train, reverted gear train, and epicyclic gear train. So this one is simple gear train over here. This a this is simple gear train. So in simple gear train, it, it consists of a series of gears which are capable of receiving and transmitting a motion to another. Uh, in simple gear train, all gear axis remains fixed and each gear is on a separate shaft. Here you can see that each gear actually remains on a separate shaft. The plan is actually shown here. This is one shaft which has one gear. This is the second shaft which has a second gear. This is the driver gear and driven gear and the power is transmitted. The simple arrangement is known as simple gear train. And uh, if you want, you can also put an idle gear in between so that you can change the direction of rotation of the two gears. Here both gears are rotating in opposite direction. Here driver and driver are rotating in the same direction for that you use an idle gear. The function of idle gear is to receive power from one gear and transmit it to the another gear. Okay, So these two represent simple gear train. Again here in this figure also you can see uh, one more uh, idle gear is used. So again all these represent simple gear train. Now compound gear train, I have not given figure of compound gear train over here. Now compound gear train is one in which the gears are arranged in series with at least one shaft have two gears mounted on it. So if it is a compound gear train then at least one at least one of the shaft will have more than one gear mounted on the same shaft. Um, some of the intermediate shafts other than driver and turn shaft, it, it will carry uh, more than one gear. Common gear trains are used for high velocity ratio uh, with comparatively less distance between the driver and driven shaft. The next one is epicyclic gear train. So basically common gear train is used for high velocity ratio. Next is reverted gear train. The figure of reverted gear train is shown here. Reverted gear train. So uh, the reverted gear train is a compound gear train in which the first and the last gear turn about the same axis. So here uh, you can see in this figure, this is the first gear, it transmits power to the second gear, then to this third gear. So this gear has more than one shaft mounted. So this is actually a compound gear train, more than one shaft mounted, and then transmit the fourth gear. Now the axis of the first and the fourth gear is same. So such type of gear train is known as a reverted gear train. Okay. So here, if you avoid this fourth uh, gear, gear 1, 2 and 3, this actually forms a compound gear train because it has more than one gear mounted on the same shaft. So uh, such gear trains are used where speed reversing is required. Uh, examples are headstock of lathe, clock etc. where speed reversing is required. Okay, So in this type of gear train is used in clock reverted gear train. Next is epicyclic or planetary gear train. This is epicyclic or planetary gear train. Uh, in uh, this gear train actually consists of uh, three elements, a gear A, gear B and an arm C. So if this arm is fixed, this is a simple gear train, gear A and B alone. But if this arm is also in motion, then this gear B uh, will be rotating, gear A will be rotating and the gear B will be revolving around gear A. So the figure uh, shown here is a simple epicyclic gear train. So this gear train is used where large re speed reductions are required. Epicycle gear trains are used where large speed reductions are required. Some uh, examples are differential gear, then gearbox of automobiles, back gear of a lathe, etc. So these are the ex uh, so this is about uh, gear trains. Thank you and uh, wishing you all a happy learning.